My name is Jason Kosovich. I'm the founder and CEO of Web3 Renewables. I would say right now we're a research consultancy, really. You know, it's, it hasn't scaled to a lot of market things yet, but, you know, building tools and applications that are useful. Um, so a little bit on the project outline and background. Sir, okay, there's my clock. So um, I work at an electrical construction solar company installer. Um, so we are an electrical contractor. We build solar. It's my day job. And um, the, pro the this project took recently constructed, privately owned residential solar and fed the generation data into IPFS in a structured and formatted way to, to be ready to enter a market as a credit, you could say. Uh, access or certificate, depending on who you ask, because that's a very contentious word, credit and certificate. But access to voluntary green markets is hard. That's what I learned. You know, just getting everything in place is, is a journey. Um, and I passionately believe that it's value adding to give agency to people to manage their energy assets and that that's a, that's a path for creating equity. So these voluntary green markets are not a space that I felt I could access or I could help my customers access who I was building solar for because there's no way to go from their meter data that they, they don't even own that meter and how do they get that into a rec. Um, there are ways to kind of do it. It's very cumbersome. So I wanted to make it straightforward. Um, and also energy and emission standards are changing. Like what is it that we're counting? Where does the value lie? How do we express that and match it to a, a demand side need? Uh, a little bit about me. So like I said, I'm a uh, work at True North Solar as an electrical contractor. I've, my personal experience is I've helped build over 6 million in local systems with probably about 200 people or so. They're all under 40 kW for the most part. So they're small, um, they're impactful I'd say. Uh, also on the side, one of the things I do is I'm a co-founding partner at League OS, which is a, it's a leading esports league management tool. So that's kind of one of the fun things I do in the cloud computing world is support high school and collegiate esports teams. So I really like that work. It, it grew out of drone racing, which was something I did. Um, yeah. Okay. So getting right into it, this is my favorite you know, description of this project that I've put together here. Uh, it basically shows us as the installer working with a master electrician who are both licensed through the Minnesota Department of Labor um, and verified by the Web3 Renewables protocol here um, it, to be permissioned actors who could bring a system online. Like, so if we see data show up, if we see green energy come to, come to bear, how do we know it's real, right? So there are different ways to do it. I felt as someone linked to the construction, I feel closely tied to the permitting and the interconnection process that's required to commission a system after inspection. So we have these roles, which is kind of like a unique Web3 thing using decentralized identifiers and verified credentials to give permission to access. Basically, we have these actors who bring a system online, they register it, we tap that system to get the energy data, raw, and we overlay it with emissions data. So one of the cool things that's happening here is that I'm getting energy data from the inverter, the customer owned system device, and I'm overlaying it with a localized grid emissions score based on uh, what Watt Time tells me. So another company that's out there that we're working with. Um, so I ping them, they give me localized grid fuel mix numbers to help inform you know, how many pounds of CO2 were avoided for this hour of generation. Um, and basically, we, we take the data from the system, we transform it, and then we present it on IPFS in a structured way following the granular certificate standard, which is the 24-7 matching approach that Energy Tag and, and folks like Google are really advocating for. So try to take this data, try to repurpose it and package it into kind of a market-ready asset. And then um, I do that every day, automate it once a month and then submit that monthly report to a tracking registry. So it's really nice, you know, in terms of how it's supposed to look. Some of the partners involved here for that, Energy Tag, they developed the standard. MRETS is a globally leading, US leading registry. Um, Watt Time provides us the emissions insights and Filecoin Green uh, helps advise and support everything. So here is the array. I built this in central Minnesota with a gentleman who's, uh, you know, he's a data scientist and security guy in his background. So I think he's all about this project. 
was really into it. It's 40.74 kW DC, 34.2 kW AC, a little bit oversized, awesome ground mount. Um, you know, we used leading, good stuff, built built the meter backboard and put it all there. So it's a real thing. It's out in the world operating right now. The guy sent me the photo this morning. I had him go out and take a quick photo while he's having his coffee. So it's it's there. And just today, I made the first rec retirement and pinned it to IPFS after having registered and, and fed all the data in. So what we're seeing here is a PDF record from MRETS showing an SREC retirement being made on behalf of a Filecoin miner seal storage and then pinning that record to IPFS so that it, it has its place in the Web3 world as, as proof. Thank you. Thanks, man. I, I can't tell you how stoked I was when I did it. I was like, oh, you know, it's been a long time coming. So I built a system for Farmer Joe up in Minnesota. And to this day, about four years later, I've been annoyed that Farmer Joe can't participate in these voluntary green markets because he just can't. He has no way to do it. And Web3 got me so excited because you have this ability to transform data into meaningful tokenized assets. And I'm not trying to create anything here like out of nothing it's like this photon from the sun journeyed through this electrically constructed system and what that generated as proof you know the data that represents this work now lives as a asset that can be shared traded or in this case it's just a demonstration of the proof of transaction because in my world i want to support the transaction here and so the actual like nft of the wreck is not as important to me as the service agreement that's taking place between the generator and the demand side off taker who wants it. And so maybe they don't want an NFT. Maybe they just want to have some good paperwork if they get audited. So whatever version it lives as, whatever DeFi thing it can apply towards, those might be great options. But underneath it all is a solid paper trail of proof showing from registered asset and the people who built it all the way to, um, you know, the, the best quality retirement you could make with industry standards there. So really excited by that. What we see here is the dashboard mock-up. I didn't put a lot of effort or time yet into like the user experience. So it's, it's pretty rough, but it works, you know, so that's the goal. What we're seeing here is what's being read from a monthly granular certificate pinned to IPFS um, to represent the month of March's generation out of the system here. And in the bottom right, you know, as an overlay of the um, avoided emissions attached to that energy based on the local grid fuel mix. So uh, it's it's pretty neat to see it all come together. I do a daily log and a monthly log. And, you know, in the general topic of like, how does this improve access and add equity? It's like, you know, this it, it formats someone's array, which they're already getting paid for the energy. They're already in an agreement for interconnection. And so this thing is working on their behalf. But there's an opportunity to do more, to be more connected to these markets. Um, what we see here is just a collection of data models created. So I've, I, I feel like I'm pretty proud of the schemas I made. I think that they're a good starting point for anyone who wants to tackle uh, industry standardization for roles or certificates or ways to validate the actors in these things. So, you know, I have the contractor schema, the electrician schema, the granular certificate, that's probably like the biggest one that's I think is pretty cool. Um, and so these just reflect like the labor department licensees that you might find for these people in these roles. This is a verified credential of uh, the system itself being registered. So, you know, I, I create the asset and then the asset has a role based permission so that now the system that's been reviewed and approved, it can now report into the index. So the system checks for that. We also have a little bit on the granular certificate around we're tracking the water hour generation on a daily, monthly level, um, and just a little bit more. So happy to answer questions too at the end, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the work that was done. I've never coded. I've never formatted JSON files. This was a huge learning experience for me. It was super fun. So I loved it. The system itself, this is like the input form that I would use to generate the JSON file and the verified credential. So it's a digital web app, log in with your wallet. You create your user account with the wallet. I haven't released it really, so it's just me doing it. I, I'm going to share the GitHub. It's all open source, so you guys can go to town with it if you'd like. I'd love to collaborate and take on more projects, so that's out there. Um, 
what's kind of unique, and I'm not, I don't want to go too deep into it, is that it uses the Web3 uh, access and identity protocols, decentralized digital identifiers and verified credentials. So that's a unique mix to add, you know, personality to the assets and the people involved. Um, so I'm going to kind of keep it short and maybe have some conversation with everyone in the room, but challenges, uh, figuring it out was very challenging. Meshing with all the different APIs and providers and when they change something on their back end and it breaks the system or the smart contract gets updated and it wipes all the assets registered, it would fundamentally undermine being able to operate as a business. You know, like Web3 is still in its heyday and unless, and I was using an open source contract to do the identity assignment and when they made a change to that contract, it, it would have eliminated all the assets I had registered. So that was a learning moment. Like if I wanted to build this as a business, I would need to control that contract so I can manage changes. And so there's there's some space around collaboration, which is maybe detrimental, you know. Um, next steps, there's lots we could do here. I am primarily interested in, in one sense, building more assets. I want to use this to help fund more solar, to help fund more storage, more electric vehicles, to help look at load shifting for emissions reductions. Those are some of the next steps um, to make it less clunky, to have more API integrations for other devices like uh, Enphase microinverters and other leading products. Um, it's a barrier to add cost into what people have to do to enter the system. Like if I, if I make someone spend an extra thousand dollars to add a custom monitoring device onto it, that'll give me the data, you know, there better be a value there for them to do that work. So I'm just using assets that are a part of the construction right now, the inverter and whatnot. I also think it'd be really good to take the project to a place where the transaction is more automated and easier to do so that it can actually fulfill its goal. Right now, I can host contract relationships with people and fulfill things, but it's kind of manual. That could get better. And also fine art. Today is my debut as a fine artist. Later tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to put my first NFT up on OpenSea, I think, on the Polygon network. It is going to be a pricey, wonderful work of art that you could take and hold and cherish and know that you're supporting the next generation of development with Web3 Renewables. I would use that to do some of these next step things and also to celebrate your interest in fine art. So the rec will be there. It's not selling a rec, it's selling my art. So Happy to, happy to chat more, though, but that's kind of the full thing. Um, happy to open up to questions and go back and review anything, but thank you, everyone, for your time and interest. I think we have time for, like, two, three questions, maybe. Any burning questions for Jason? So, again, wonderful talk. Super excited about what you're doing with IPFS and, and what this means for the space broadly. Um, and maybe outside of just the realm of, like, retail usage of, of uh, renewable energy certificates or credits, however you want to call it, um, what do you see the potential of um, maybe instituting environmental impact bonds for built environment development? So there's lots of people who are doing pro formas around uh, the next stages of master planning and city development where they are genuinely weighing like how much they can uh, dedicate in terms of land use area to pv versus you know something else and i think what you're showing here is something that is not only um you know valuable um in the the retrospective with the daily and monthly you know reports etc but in the projective kind of prospective direction where you can actually start giving people um, specifically built environment developers ways to monetize the process so that that way when they go to some affluent developer totally. they can they can start using that to make good and finance their projects their capital projects absolutely yeah so uh west gave a talk earlier today where he talked about you know hbar's guardian and all the futures things in there um i you know many of the systems i'll build will participate in that kind of thing with the utility company pre-purchasing a 10-year contract for the recs based on a budgeted allocation that goes yearly based on performance so however much you generate you get a check for this much each year for 10 years. Um, that is utility linked. It's linked to a policy-based renewal, renewable portfolio standard for our state that carves out a little need for small generation for the utility. I think it's a fantastic opportunity. I, you know, as an installer, 
I feel pretty confident that I could go back and look at how much we projected to generate in the work that we did, how much we actually generated, and then use that insight to help inform a little bit of risk and you know buffer for us. So I think the idea of a futures contract of something to help support building this up front with some escrow, lots of mechanisms that I'm not so familiar with, but I think it'd be really valuable and help the work get done and moving. Big thanks also for actually using like local regulations to inform the actual assurance of, of the people who are doing this work on the ground because like that's huge. Totally. Yeah. I mean, having a track record in a challenging industry to navigate is, is hard. There's a lot of companies that fold for nefarious reasons or just because they did their best and it's hard. So, uh, you know, well, we've been open for 12 years and feel pretty, pretty strong at the moment. So thanks for the question. Any other questions? I think we have time for one more. Yeah, I'm coming back. Alexa, let's go. Um, you're uh, like you have your business, right? It's very straightforward. Yeah. Why did you start to be interested in those, you know, things? Is this like a personal interest? Do you see that it can bring value to your business? Like, can you be more like precise here, please? Oh, okay. Um, I thought it bring. I thought it bring value to the business. I was viscerally annoyed that farmer joe can't participate like the exons of the world can because the contracts in the voluntary green market are enterprise commercial to enterprise commercial you know there it happens more than that but at least in my experience where i live what i saw it was really accessible and i i didn't like that and i was also really impassioned by what web3 can do um one thing that i also really connected to so you know it was part of my drone racing robotics background esports stuff um i got really into skills credentialing so like this little subset here around like verifying the license of the installer and having it become a permission credential that feeds a system and, you know, links to, if you want to see this rec and know that this rec is real, you trace the record back to, oh yeah, I got brought online by a licensed contractor who doesn't want to lose their license for lying. So um, in that, you know, if someone goes through an electrical training program, that's the pathway to that licensure. So the next step of it would be like, okay, we got a master electrician what kind of training hours did they get? Were they union trained? Were, do they have a higher or lower pass fail rate on systems they get inspected than the national average? Why is that? Did they take the right course? Is that course not up to... So there's a lot around skills credentialing that can feed into it. And interestingly, you know, Alexa, when you asked like, why did I get into this? Because I think systems are really important. And so like career technical education is almost a trillion dollar funded industry right now. It's the way that our federal government passes money to districts for college uh, articulated courses. So if you take a high school course for college credit and it links to um, you know, a STEM learning objective that falls in CTE, your high school, your middle school could get federal dollars for the, the modular coursework you do. So if you take a class in building a drone robotics, like we wrote a curriculum, I wrote a curriculum, and you get ready for this college level of learning, your high school and your middle school can get your middle school can get money for the drone racing team because your high school offers a drone robotics course that gets credit at the college level. And then that leads up to being a master electrician because now you've got credentials moving you in that direction. So this system is a massive part of the reporting. And like right now, the IRA, you can get 26% adder on a megawatt plus project if you can show apprentice labor and prevailing wage. You build a $10 million project, that's a chunk of change to do good reporting on. So these systems are very integrated, and I say that's the part of the passion for me is like, how do we start making this stuff easier and less friction to to find value to like normal people to do good things and get stuff built, right? Yeah.